I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, people? How you doing? It is a great day, and I'm so very excited to be here today. It is a wonderful day, and it is an author's edition. Welcome back to the show. So we have an amazing author on the show today, and I want to welcome Miss Collier on the show today. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you. So I see a book and I see a doll. Yes. Okay. This is the book. (laughs) Okay. So wait, before we get into that, how did you know that you were going to do this? And, And tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a wife. A mother, stepmom. I have all those titles. Aunt, uncle, grand. No, I'm not an uncle. Aunt, <laughs> niece. You might as well be, right? <laughs> yes, might as well be. But I have grandchildren and great grandchildren. And a few years ago, I was extremely worried. We had some stuff on the news that just made me wonder what are my grandkids going to do if we have another war? And if we had a war that devastated the United States, because it could happen. And I was just dreaming things about what they could do. I have some grandchildren I think would be able to act like my little heroine here, Ridley. And I have other grandchildren that I don't think they'll make it. They don't know anything if they lose electricity They wouldn't know what to do without food and clean water. It was just something that I just was very inspired to write for and write about. I don't think a lot of people would know what to do. (laughs) Well, I have to agree with you. I don't have too many adults in this book because the adults, things happened in the cities and, you know, I think adults would get into it and they'd fight over things and, I just had to have a little heroin. She got in trouble. She got put in a detention center. And pretty much that's the only reason she and the other children there survived for several years. So that's what I based my story on. Wow. 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 So you went through something like this before? No, didn't go through it. I was just dreaming about it. It was just something that I watched my grandkids playing with all their electronics and I thought, and then I started dreaming about what would happen if we had this war. I got Mm -hmm. you. I got you. I got you. So electronics, you know, I mean, I'd have to say like maybe the children from the seventies, maybe some children from the eighties would be able to survive without all of this because we didn't have most, most 90% of this stuff we didn't have. Back in the day. So, and, and, you know, people that were born before. Um, So, but the children that were born on electronics and gadgets and gizmos. Yeah. That's going to be a challenge for them. They're not used to hitting the street. Street teams are no longer street teams. (laughs) So tell us about your book, your first published book. Well, it's called Ridley new beginnings. And it is the first book in a series of five that I have written taking Ridley when she, when the war hits, Ridley's nine years old, and I take her through her stages of life when she gets put in a detention center. She meets other children there. Um, she meets a boy that is three years older than her. They become fast friends. It's a very platonic relationship for the first five years of detention. And at one point, after those five years, there's nothing left food-wise in the detention center and they are turned out into the wild to basically survive on their own. And the only reason Ridley knows how to do this is she used to watch all the wild TV shows like Survivor, Alone, you know, all those kind of uh, Alaska, The Last Frontier. She watched all these TV shows and retained that knowledge. And when she got to the detention center, There was a few books in that library that helped with surviving in nature. And she studied those books like you wouldn't believe. And she learned, she taught Jinx, her male friend, how to survive. And I just take this story with other kids from the detention center 
on all the way through in the fifth book, they are great grandparents by that point. Right. What has happened? What has happened to survive? The people that may or may not have showed up uh, in this detention area. And they are in an actual very wilderness area. So they are too afraid to leave this area that they're in. It has a water source. She knows how to hunt. And I won't give away all of the secrets of my book, but of course. <laughs> there, there, there are some things that able them to survive. Let me put it that way. <laughs> right, I hear you. I hear you. You know, it is it is alarming to to how how would you say how close to a crisis we can become, yes. and then to lose you know everything that we have our hands on right now is just it's just amazing. Yeah. I think that we are close to it at some points and some points we're not. But I think this book might appeal to not only the young to help them learn how to survive and right. also to see how strong uh, your character is, but also to the adults. What do you think? I agree with you because my goal basically was not only to help young children learn some skills from Ridley and her, her friends, but I was hoping that parents who read this book would think twice about what is, what if it happens? And I'm not here, even if I am here, what are my children gonna do without food, without water? It would be horrific in my opinion. I think so too, I think so mm -hmm. too. There's a lot of gadgets and gasmos out there that actually help you to, you know, to do these things. And by Wrigley watching the survival shows and all that, she kind of got, a, a, you know, a schooling on that beforehand. I think we should all get a schooling beforehand. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good think, idea. Oh, I think so. I think so. So I'm looking at a doll. Mm -hmm. uh, what other, is this your doll? Is, do you have other hobbies? I do. Um, writing, of course, takes up most of my time now. But I've been writing for probably oh, close to 10 years since we've been retired. And um, that's when I started Ridley. But I like to read books too. I like to sew and I remake baby dolls. And that's what she is. Oh. She is, I took a doll, doll parts that you can get on the internet and the body, the whole bit. And I have made literally dozens of them. I have a few here at home, but I used to sell them on eBay. And I had dolls that went as far away as Spain and Italy and a lot of local, a lot of local dolls when we lived in Texas. Wow. But that's just another hobby. I've got several. <laughs> I hear you. And I decided to put her in here holding my book. So <laughs> well, that's kind of cool. I like that. That's really kind of cool. I mean, I've never, I've heard of people saying they make dolls, but not remake. So that's, that's, yes. different. that's a little different. Kind of like a it refurbish, is. kind of like yes. a recycle. I recycle and refurbish dolls that are either in really bad condition that are salvageable, or I go ahead and buy parts on the internet to make exactly what I want. Mm, I like and that. the ones I have at my house are the ones I keep. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So what are you going to do if this movie, oh, sorry, <laughs> if I've already kind of jumped, yeah, no. <laughs> up, this book becomes a movie or a TV series, what are you going to do? Probably the first thing I'm going to do is faint. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> and I think as soon as I uh, recover from fainting, I'm going to let every person in my family and all of my friends know about it because there have been some that doubted that I could even write this book and get published. So I had to say, guess what? I got yes. published. I, I and do it too. now I might get to make a movie. I would do it too. I would be like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here, look. Look, look, look at my contract. <laughs> I'd be coughing and all that going like. <clears throat> It would be I fun. hope it does. I hope it does. I hope it does. And I will be praying that it does for you because I, I li literally want to be on camera with you when you do that. <laughs> that would be so fun. Yes, it, it would. would be fun. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Where can people thank find you? you? Where can they find your book? 
my book right now is on major websites, um, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Apple, Apple Books, uh, iTunes, Walmart. and believe it or not, walmart.com. <laughs> Hello. You can even, I know, it's like Walmart, woo, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. I, if you're at Walmart, you made it. Yes. Yes, that's definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I truly thank appreciate you. it, Collier. And it's been such a pleasure having you on the show. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you. Don't forget to dare to be different. We're going to have all of that information about the book in the description box below. So it'll be easy for you guys to go ahead and get that. And uh, until next time, guys. Bye. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Yaya Diamonds Dream Chasers Radio. I want to give a shout out to my official sneaker sponsor, EncoreKicks.com. EncoreKicks.com. They have the best sneakers. I mean, literally speaking, there's mine. Phoenix, Bill Russell, right there. You can't beat it. They also do custom shoes. You can commemorate your loved one. You can give it to your band members. You can also have it for your fans available on EncoreKicks.com. EncoreKicks.com. The best, most comfortable sneakers I've ever worn, and I will never go back. Thank um, you to thank our you. sponsor, DuPont Network, who's sponsoring us this year to go to the Stomp the Iconic Awards in Memphis, Tennessee on October 1st. We're going to have so much fun and so many amazing interviews as you you can see this past year that we had we are doing it again this year thank you guys so much for tuning in I'm